HARP stands for High Frequency Active Aurora Research Project and is described as a research instrument for studying the ionosphere. An ionospheric heater, or ionospheric radiation instrument, IRI, of which many exist, but HARP is special. The ability to focus energy and the unprecedented amount in gigawatts, billions of watts, make it literally millions of times more effective at heating the region about 150 miles above the Earth's surface. The atmosphere has most of its density below 30 miles altitude. The ionosphere is the very thin layer above that absorbs dangerous ultraviolet radiation and makes life possible on Earth. There is very little mixing normally between the two layers, but disturbances in the ionosphere translate to changes in weather such as normally occurring sunspots and the solar wind. The main idea behind HARP is the ability to direct electrons along the naturally occurring magnetic field lines of the Earth and accelerate them to near the speed of light to form a protective shell of highly excited particles that not only block communications worldwide but destroy missiles in their trajectory as they descend from space. The effects can be localized by punching a hole through the ionosphere to superheat an area 30 kilometers in diameter into a plasma shield. Any missile or aircraft would be destroyed that tried to fly through the plasma, which is the fourth state of matter. A hole in the ionos ionosphere above an enemy country could kill by allowing the solar radiation to strike the surface of the Earth unhindered. Weather modification can also be used as an instrument of warfare by man manipulating the electro jet and the jet streams which dictate climate. The publicly stated aim is C3 or communications command and control. The margin of victory in war is to block or intercept enemy communications and to secure your own. The signals in the, el in the ELF range can be generated by HARP and heard anywhere in the world and are used for earth penetrating tomography basically finding enemy submarines or underground bases volcanoes and earthquakes cause electromagnetic disturbances and it is theorized that EM disturbances might themselves trigger earthquakes and volcanoes Dr. Richard Williams says the high energy experiments will generate the equivalent of the output of 10 to 100 large power generating stations and that tests of these kinds could cause irreversible damage." Unquote. HARP is the world's largest electromagnetic broadcasting station and may represent an escalation in the electromagnetic wars. The project is a creation of the US Air Force and Naval Research. Publicly it is an ionospheric research instrument but it can be used to control weather and do electromagnetic sweeps that can be used for mind control of large populations. HARP, located 30 miles from Fairbanks, Alaska, is the real focus of anti-missile defense that SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative, purported to be, and much more. The public patent was titled, A Method and Apparatus for Altering a Region of the Earth's Atmosphere, Ionosphere, and Magnetosphere. Dr. Bernard Eastland, a physicist who holds a patent for the fusion torch, also holds about a dozen other related patents that were eventually purchased by E-Systems and Raytheon. Patent number 4686605 claims the following uses. Cause total disruption of all forms of communications over a very large portion of the Earth missile or aircraft destruction deflection or confusion weather modification by altering solar absorption also altering composition of the atmosphere this patent was classified by the Navy under National Security Order in 1987 but other patents exist for purposes of power beaming systems artificial ionospheric mirror composed of a plasma layer. Creation of artificial ionizing clouds above the earth. Defense system for discriminating between objects in space. Nuclear sized explosions without radiation. 
Dr. Yarrow states, Earth's axial spin means that a burst lasting more than a few minutes will slice through the ionosphere like a microwave knife, producing not a hole, but a long tear and incision." Unquote. According to Dr. Elizabeth Rosher, the ionosphere is prone to catalytic reactions, so if a small part is changed, a major change in the ionosphere can happen. HARP documents admit that a thousand-fold greater amounts of energy can be released in the ionosphere than are injected. Stanford University experiments beaming radio waves, very low frequency waves, into the magnetosphere detected the signals halfway around the world. Some were amplified a thousand times. HARP documents describe intentionally trying to get a runaway effect in the ionosphere. The instabilities commonly studied are approaching their maximum radio frequency energy dissipative capacity beyond which the plasma processes will run away until the next limiting factor is reached." Unquote. The first atomic weapons testing was done without knowing if the chain reaction would stop or keep going. Dr. Robert Oppenheimer admitted years later that Quote, the government knew that the scientists didn't know, unquote. The decision to pulse several gigawatts of energy into the ionosphere could cross a threshold. Walter Richmond wrote an account of such an event in a book entitled The Lost Millennium. The event began with a solar tap, a planetary short circuit. Quote, the surge of power became an avalanche. At the pole in the vertical plane of the Earth's magnetic field where the winds of magnetism would not rise to blow it out, one trillion watt seconds of energy unleashed their fury on the polar cap in the first flash. Even as it discharged, the ionosphere was recharged from the solar furnace. The first flash became a mighty roar that poured an increased and now steady stream of energy through the now stabilized short circuit, kilo cubit after kilo cubit, a frozen wasteland boiled, watt after ever increasing watt, an avalanche of ever increasing energy lit the polar cap with a glare that had never been seen before on Earth. Earth's an electrical motor. When the motor began to run wild, it would re increase its rotational speed. Eventually, the Earth would explode from increased centrifugal stress.